Hello crafty friends. I'm here with a tutorial. Long promised, long overdue. Thank you for your patience. Um, on how to how I make some of the dangles and the drippings that uh, that hang out of my journals. Um, I'm not I tried several times to set up the video to do. I'm not sure what order so you can just fudge through this with me. Thank you for your patience again. Um, the first thing is a carrier or a uh, delivery vehicle to attach things on to our journals. And it, I love this part of it. It's so easy because whether you want to have something dangling from the edge of the page or the bottom of the page, you can use a paper clip. Uh, you can use these owl clips. That's O-W-L, owl, as in... I guess it sort of could look like an owl. Anyways, these uh, clip right on, and you can actually have a place for two dangles. They really stay on the page pretty well. I put them on the bottom sometimes, and uh, I'll show you in a few minutes how I attach things to these. Um, huh? <laughs> these are bulldog clips, and they're also super easy to attach things onto. Uh, so all of those things can go on to paper quite easily. And then we have safety pins, which we can put through the edges of any fabric that's on the page or hanging off the page or lace. Or um, I like to use the, the uh, rolls of burlap that come with a piece of lace on it. They're really stiff. They have floral wire in the edges of it. And you can fold those over for a tab and put really... Uh, heavy beads that won't pull on your page and, and, and make it droop. So that's a little bit about things that we can attach our drippings to. I've pulled out a couple of the old journals that I made and sold and, and kept a copy of to show you some some other ways that you can uh, achieve the, the dangle effect. Um, the very easiest way is to get a ribbon with uh, some ribbon end clips and make a bookmark. It'll drip out the bottom and over out the spine. So that's one idea. You can buy these. These are called, uh, oh, they're called several things, ribbon crimps, crimped ribbon ends. Uh, I'm sure that there are other names for them. And you can find them in different uh in different widths to go on various types of ribbon. Um, another kind of dripping is to sew a piece of sari ribbon or regular ribbon uh, onto something that's on the page or the page itself and let it just dangle out of the bottom and, and add a fun bead to it. Just gives it a another layer. Of course, Christmas jingles always dangle well. So that's that idea. Another thing other than adding a bead to hang out the bottom from a piece of sari, you might try jazzing up um, a wooden spool. You can just hit the tops and bottom with a little distressing to make it look older if it's plain wood and, and wrap whatever you like around it and it just gives it that effect. This is one of my go-to dangles which is something we'll make in a minute. It's just on a uh, safety pin and clipped right onto the lace there and off the sides as well. And this is the other journal I got out to show you. I like to, um, in the first signature, Actually, this is a traveler's notebook, so I don't know if this is a signature or insert. Anyways, the two strings where we uh, sew the pages and you've got two ends to either tie or do whatever. I always make the first signature extra long and that lets us, gives us a place to put some beads. If you do it every signature, the dangles, they get tangled with each other and it's not practical. Um, and I always, I do want to make these usable. So let me start going through some of the ways I put these together. And what I've got is uh, a new journal 
that I've made and I've all but finished her except for everything that's going to dangle off of it. Uh, this is my Leonardo da Vinci journal, nine by six, full size. And I have the strings for all of the signatures hanging out, but I'll make the other ones probably shorter. So let me grab some beads and, uh, and, uh, and get some of the stuff out of the way and I'll be right back. While I was cleaning up, I found one other journal that I had taken out to show. Um, it's really cool to put some uh, washi tape that goes with the journal somehow tied to the, uh, the tie and you can tie it temporarily to get it to its um, recipient, the new owner of the journal, or you can put them on there permanently and just let it be a little tape dispenser like I did with this. And there's one of those bulldog clips just put in there. And then whenever you're making a closure uh, that has ties on it, you can usually find a place. You can go right through the ribbon or you can somehow attach it to the eyelet if you're creative with jewelry, but so that there's a charm or maybe some beads hanging uh, right right where your closure attaches. So that's a few more ideas. Back to Da Vinci here. So I've got my journal finished and what's sticking out are all of the strings, lace petticoats. It's, it's all textile really and I'd like to put some charms and things uh, just that will really make different places pop. So I did go ahead and attach, I attached the first charm that's just a charm on a jump ring through some lace, the little Vitruvian man there. So I'm going to do a flip through of this. So um, I'll just be skipping around for now. Uh, da, 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 da. Is it the first signature? Yes. Here is the first signature strings, and I have found a needle. Let me just take a minute and say needles and beads need to be matched. Um, what you're going to find is that you have a little bit thicker uh cord either hemp cord or embroidery thread that's this is number 10 crochet thread um and you need to use a little bit bigger of an eye of a needle but then when you go through some of the smallest beads it will not fit over the string there and the eye so it's a little bit frustrating what i do when i get out the beads that i want to use for any given project i i take the needle and find out what I'm gonna to need to use with my string before I uh, use the one actually attached to the book or, or my final one. And I see which beads will go over the string that I'm using and put the ones away that I can't use with that needle. It will save you a great deal of frustration ahead of time. So for the first signature, I want my beads when they're when this is hanging when it's closed to start just below the page so i'm gonna i i cut this really really long so that i can tie knots and have room to work with it i always tend to to cut my strings a little long we can always cut more and i know that these wooden beads and these wooden beads and this set of metallic beads will all fit over that needle. I'm just going to... I don't know what I'd do without mason jars. I could not manage to stay even remotely organized if I didn't, didn't have this. And the lids make great trays to pour things on and work. So I'm just going to take some, some alternate beads here. I guess we could get a clothespin to hold this open. Yeah, that works. And I'm still in frame. Okay, I'm just going to take you know, a dark color 
medium color, and then a light color bead and put them right on there and we can fuss with where they're gonna hang in just a few minutes. Pick out a little gold bead here. And then do the reverse. It's absolutely the easiest beading that we could do. I lost one. Light color, medium color, dark color. There we go. And we have a nice little little beaded section there. And then I want something to pop a little bit at the end, something to give it a little color. These are teardrop beads. They are available, at least they were relatively recently on Amazon. And colors, colors. Let me just make sure these go with the cover fabric. Really a pretty, pretty fabric. I used this years ago for my uh, Galileo astronomy. Yeah, those colors will go well. Okay. So back to the first signature. <laughs> there we go. Lose my needle there. So I like to put um, a metallic bead above and below these, which uh, really highlights the color in between. And then I'm just going to tie a double knot below it, and I'm going to position that knot so that when the beads hang, oh, see that one won't go over. Most of them do. There we go. So. I'm going to tie the knot so that the beads will start maybe a quarter, half inch below the page. I'm going to hold my finger where I want the knot to be. And I'm just going to tie it right there. Before I pull it tight, see I've got that knot a little bit loose. I'm just going to dangle that and push the beads down to where the knot is and make sure it's where I want it. It's a little bit high still, but if you haven't pulled it tight, you've got wiggle room to uh, to move it. You can put your needle right in it, slide it up or down, and I will trim off a little bit of this extra and make that a double, sometimes a triple knot. It depends on how big the opening of the bead is right above it. I would rather tie a bigger, clunky, fat knot and not let those beads come off. And you slide it right down and I trim it oh, about a half an inch down. And that's the first one. So I'll come back and do almost a similar thing, maybe add a few different color beads in a few minutes, but uh, let's move on to another idea. For the other signatures after the first signature in a lot of journals that I do, I prefer to use paper dangles. We're going to be closing the page, and if you're writing on the pages before or after and you have anything bulky in there, it's going to make it hard to write. And uh, I, I just prefer to try to stick with this. Several people have found some really flat beads. Um, Wendy Connors Beckett has used some of these gorgeous little butterfly type things in hers, and they're very flat. It's really not going to bulge the page out, but I don't have a lot of flat beads, so I prefer to stick with these. And these are my favorite three uh, paper punches to use. I got this paper out that would complement it. And I thought I would do one of the signatures with butterflies since Da Vinci loved to draw and uh, do engineering about wings. So 
each signature center will need four pieces of paper, four shapes, because we're going to glue them like so. And you need a front and back. I'm just going to hit these with some distress ink. And I'll distress those and we'll put them on in just a minute. Uh, for another signature, I thought I would do banners. And I like the banners because they've got long straight room to put Tim Holt's words on. So I'll go through these and distress each one as well. And then I'll look for words that, uh, you know, go with the project. Here's a word that says artist. And I'm just going to distress it as well. I think sometimes grabbing it, I worry about the sticky stuff staying on. So um, I'll often put two dots of the fabric glue, the Fabri-Tac on it. And you can do it at an angle or straight up and down and it just adds a little character to that and then for my last signature i'm going to oh, i'll just do some round punches and we can probably find some words that will fit on those as well So let me distress and word these up and I'll be right back and we'll we'll stick those in the journal. I've finished punching and distressing and uh, attaching words. So I'm just going to go into my other signatures and I'll just show you real quick on one of them. I'm going to cut this staggered. Uh, if you cut them the same length, the two dangles are going to be the same and they're going to uh, hide the one that's under it. So if you cut the first string just a little longer, and they're both still well short of the page, so nothing is gonna hang off at the bottom. And let me just grab my little round ones for this. And I use white glue. Really, really simple. I usually cover one in glue and then just put a spot on the other to grab the other side of the string. Make sure our words are right side up. They don't have to be completely across, but readable helps. <laughs> just generally going in the right direction. Here we go. It's a big male turkey out in the yard, just walking around. Where is everybody? <laughs> okay, and the second one right side up. I put captured as one of the words, capture. He certainly did. Da Vinci captured quite a bit of beauty and clever engineering. And there we have it. They just, they kind of lay cascaded because we made the strings different. So that's what I do um, inside most of my journals. And let me show you how I'm going to attach beads and charms to the outside. So now I get to the part of my uh, attaching the drippings that um, I try to I try to space them out a bit. I want it. I always want it to look random, and of course, always it's not because <laughs> I plan it ahead of time. But I kind of divide the side of the journal into three sections, and I'd like to have something in the top, the middle, and the bottom. Some journals are busier than others, and and I do two at each level or 
maybe two and one and two. Uh, you're going to have your closure going across. So anything that hangs right here isn't going to show unless the journal is open. If you've got something really eye-popping to attach, you might want to keep that in mind so it falls off the top or the bottom or or right out of, of this part of the bottom. And the two easiest ways to, to get them on are either by paper clip or safety pin. And I take some hemp cord. It comes in all different thicknesses and colors. And different ones will let you get different beads and needles over the edges. Uh, so I like the, the neutral color ones. And they're usually with the beading in the craft stores, easy to find. And I just tie, I just tie a double knot right onto the end. I did put a needle over this. I struggled with it off camera. <laughs> and I'm going to make a little dripping to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm out of frame, to, to, put on a paper clip to come out of here, maybe in front of this tab. I don't know. Let's see how busy it is, but um, don't want to make it too long. If you make them too long with the paper clips, what happens is you end up inadvertently tugging it um, when you're using the journal. And so I try to make the paper clip ones shorter than the ones that I would do the same thing to a safety pin. So grab all my little beads here. And really, really like these small wooden beads. Uh, they come in different colors. I get them at Joann's, Joann Fabrics. I'm sure they're available elsewhere. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I have not been craft shopping in so long. All I can tell you is where I used to get them. So I've got a couple beads going on there. Put a few more wooden ones. And then rather than uh, put a big clunky bead on the bottom or just tie a knot, I mean, that's that's pretty, but it doesn't really pop off, off the journal at you. Uh, something with character works. And I love the word coins from Tim Holtz. Seen and noted. Da Vinci kept extensive journals. He was, and, and aren't we grateful for it? We have all of his uh, his journals. You can get them on the internet and just download them. I'm just going to tie a knot as close as I can get. I've got all the beads pushed right up to this. They'll relax a little, which is what I want. I want just a little bit of string hanging there. But I'm just going to tie a knot right around this. Could not be more crude and simple. And I will definitely tie that in a double knot. See how it relaxed and gave me that little bit of string at the top. I'm just going to tie this in a double knot and, uh, and trim the string. There we go. Get rid of the needle on the end. And I'm just going to trim it about a quarter inch down. So they're nice and tight. And then we have the other side. Now, since this is flat, the last thing I want to do is put something else flat under it for it to cover it. So if I use another word coin, I'd want to go higher or lower and uh, you know we just build our strings from there they are uh, simple to put together and you can dangle charms from them you can you can use beads uh, these are strung beads you get from many stores uh, most of the metal ones do come on strings, and I put them in here. And it's a matter of finding what will what will go over that needle. <laughs> the big butterflies are pretty easy to do. So 
Let's put together one more here. I'm going to use a safety pin because I have some special charms that are going to be clunky and they're going to be easy to tug. And if you tug on it and it's attached to fabric and a safety pin, it's going to do this rather than the, the clips pulling the page or, or trying to tear at the paper. So I'm just going to take a very average safety pin trying to call everything by its correct name today. I've gone back and looked at some of my videos and I'm calling clothes pins, paper clips and safety pins, this and that. It's, it's, it's rough. Um, what is this about nine or 10 inches long, then doubled over. And I'm just going to tie that in a double knot about in the middle right to the coiled part of the pin. Like so. And then I'm just gonna start beading again. Um, for this one, I've got some awkward charms. Da Vinci loved wings and I have a set of wings. You know what? Those are both left wings. I need a left and a right wing. There we go. That's better. We would have been flying in circles the other way. Okay. So these are, they are charms. There's a little hole through the end. And I'm just going to string a few beads on one side and tie the first wing and then I'm going to make the beads on the other side a little longer so that we can tear them. All those beads and I picked the one that doesn't fit. Maybe we'll go silver beads since it's a silver wing. There we go. So I've just got some really basic wood metal wood and let's see i guess i guess i want them to hang like that so i'll make this one the short one and i'm going to do exactly what i just did i'm going to tie this off with a knot or a double knot Tighten that up just a little bit. It's always easier to do when the camera's not rolling. Why is that? I'm sure, it's all psychological. There we go. And again, I'm just going to cut that about a quarter inch down. So I've got the beads there. And then on this one, I th I'm gonna put five beads instead of the three so that, uh, so that it will hang a little longer. I'm gonna see if I can get them on without, without a needle. Oops, we're using silver, aren't we? Silver. When I'm alone, which is most of the time, I constantly talk to myself. If I have to go into the kitchen to grab two things, I say those two things out loud, or I get to the kitchen and the second one or the first one is gone. And I, I find I've started to do the same stuff with crafting. Okay, we're gonna put this away and get the charms out next, Liz, the charms. <laughs> Prepping myself for really old age. All right, so. I have alternated the beads kind of to complement the first one, just added a few extra in there. And I'm gonna tie off the other wing. And just put that in a double knot as well. When I finish 
taping this, I have to go to my garden and start picking tomatoes and doing something with them. So I think I'm going to can stewed tomatoes this weekend. And since I have enormous alien size zucchini, I'm going to um, probably put chunks of squash in my stewed tomatoes. My mother used to say, better to ask forgiveness than permission. So there's, there's a good chunky dangle and I'll probably attach this. Well, let's figure out now where I'm going to attach it. Somewhere towards the bottom of the journal where, uh, where it won't be in the way, but it'll be easily visible. Let's go right in the middle of this. Love that Tim Holtz fabric with the writing on it because there's so much uh, of Da Vinci's work that was black script that you couldn't read every which way and it just reminded me. Since this is heavy, I'm going to go th in and out of the fabric several times to get it to get it anchored really well. There we go. And there we have our wing dangles. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep whittling away. I'm going to take out three or four more safety pins and paper clips. Um, I have a really clunky charm that I want to put as a dangle on this. So I'm going to use a bulldog clip. It's a little frame. Um, if you're wondering, these came from Michael's. They give you a bronze and a pewter one. And uh, you can undo the... Um, jump ring at the top and then slip whatever images you want and I put the Mona Lisa in there and it was really hard but I got a second Da Vinci uh, one of his beautiful sketches of a young woman in there so I'm going to attach this just with a jump ring to the bulldog clip that way we could literally clip it on the front clip it on the spine you can clip it to a page um, or if it's just too much in the way, you can, you know, clip it to something to use as a bookmark so it's off page. But those are some of my most basic dangle ideas. There's no rocket science whatsoever involved. It's just uh, very basic, basic things. Um, tassels are also easy if it's got a little hoop on it or you can attach one to put on the safety pins or the paper clips. So uh, ideas are unlimited. It's really, really fun to, to play with. So I hope you got something out of this. I will do a separate video for the Da Vinci Journal. I'm not sure if I'll post them in which order, so you may have already seen it or not, but um, I'll be back soon. Lots in the works. Thanks for stopping by today. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.